Hello, friends, family, and my followers. This is Hike360, and I'm here to give you a new hike this week. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo! Hello, my friends, my family, and my followers. It's Hike360 here, and I'm here to give you a new hike this week. So we are in the parking lot at Crabtree Nature Center. Uh, this is in Barrington Hills in Illinois. And we're here to do a quick little two and a half mile uh, double loop. So here we are. Uh, we were not able to do this yesterday because they have updated COVID hours. So when we got here after our first hike yesterday at 3.45, uh, we came to realize very quickly that the park <laughs> closed at four. So we came back today, uh, Friday, and we're, we're here to complete our mission and get this hike done. So this is a part of the Cook County Forest Preserve uh, organization. And we're here mostly to, well, we have our eyes peeled for the different trees that exist here. Uh, the different trees and the different terrains. So as far as trees go, and I am no tree expert, uh, we will be looking for the weeping willows, uh, the sumacs, uh, they said black willows, black willows, a bunch of maples, silver maples. Nice. Hey, hey you know I'm your tree. He knows his trees. Now, you know what I was listening for is uh, this. Uh, so I'm excited because this is a, a wetland as well as a savanna and prairie hike. So there's a yes. lot, as the, as the description said, a lot packed into a small space. Um, but I found it um, refreshing, uh, expected maybe, um, to have water, trees that drink a lot of water ah. in wetlands. And okay. so from our Morton Arboretum hike, when yeah. we were talking about what are the best flood control trees for towns and municipalities that um, that have flooding in different parts of them, like where we're from, mm -hmm. um, there is, <laughs> you know, we the the golf course near us had a bunch of weeping willows, and they've slowly disappeared through the last couple of years. Um, and uh, you know, the, the things like the, the weeping willows are kind of a pain to manage, but nothing really drinks more water than that kind of a tree, and so it's really counter productive to take out that tree and and the contrary it'd be really productive to put in trees like maples and willows because they drink so much water gotcha so um i found it very pleasantly um what did i say predictable yeah to to have those trees in, in this location it makes sense yeah cattail marshes that's another terrain that that's right in front of us uh, so I'll just run quickly above the next to the the cattails, and and we'll we'll catch you on the next video. All right, we're uh, crossing the sulky pond. This is what it looks like. This happens all very quickly, like the nature center is right up there. We're already knee deep in nature. This is a pretty traveled, from my understanding, it's a pretty traveled uh, reserve. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot here and uh, I think it's, it's well worth the trip. So, and uh, you know, this is kind of year round. You know, I, I guess there's prairie and savanna that we'd like to see in bloom, but uh, from the wildlife standpoint, uh, you know, take a listen, you can hear it. Man. We're walking along the Phantom Trail. Um, definitely use the 360 controls here. I'm gonna hold the camera up high. Uh, there's a lot to see, and um, we'll we'll start walking here. But this is this is all part of the wetland. This is the looking toward the east. So most of the Crabtree Reserve is on the west side of the property, and this is we're along the Phantom Trail. Did I say? All right. So yeah, this Phantom this Trail. is where you get to see east, and uh, yeah. we got to come back when this is in balloon. Hmm. 
It's pretty nice. Yesterday we talked a little bit, uh, when I'm looking at the 360 videos, like I'm, I'm hyper. I'm just moving them around and looking up and down and spinning it and you seem to do the same thing, right? Definitely, yeah. I'm, uh, I mean, I'm on mobile when I watch our videos, uh, but yeah, I, I'm using my fingers and I'm seeing what's around constantly. Yeah, yeah. So if you're not doing that, do that because <laughs> it's a lot of fun once you get used to it. And of course, with the mobile, you can spin the whole your whole body too. Pro tip: also set the the quality all the way up. Like we have a nice camera, and when I load these videos on my phone, it reverts to a really low quality. It's really worth it to to boost that quality all the way up. Hit pause, let the video load, uh, because. Seriously, this our camera ca it picks up so much, yeah, and it just makes all the difference. Yeah, and <laughs> I'll say for the technical crowd, if you're using VR glasses as well, we're not inserting any keyframes, so uh, you really do need to download that higher quality stream because it's not going to re-establish itself at any point during the video. Wow, look at this view! Yeah. smelling I smelled something uh, I can't really identify it and it went away too Have we changed trails yet? No, we're still on the Phantom Trail. Okay. But we're on the back of the property here. Yeah. Kind of the furthest most point. We've entered into forest. And there are a lot of different forest types around here. Kind of off in the distance, you got the pines. I can't identify the trees, as Ryan said at the beginning. There's we're a not, lot of them. There's a lot of them, and we're not tree experts, but. I think we're in sumac and some other maples. And burrs? Burrs could be, sure. That's something he mentioned. <laughs> this looks gorgeous down here. Spin around if you got 360 controls while I'll spin you around. That is, I really like that. It's a definite savannah, look. savannah feel. We've been seeing a lot of burns. It's a topic for our heights these days. Yeah. And there's been some burns around here, controlled burns. So we did some research in the car. What's the purpose of the burn? And there, turns out there's a couple of purposes, depending on what your land management goals are, such as. Let me pull it out. Okay. Well, one of them is fuel management, you know, reducing the amount of burnable fuel on the ground. And uh, out west, when you have uncontrolled forest fires, doing controlled burns to reduce the amount of fuel that would otherwise burn in an uncontrolled burn makes a lot of sense. And supposedly uh, the carbon footprint is significantly less, as would make sense. A controlled burn is going to burn a lot less than an uncontrolled burn. So that would be a good thing. So a wildfire is going to cause a much bigger carbon footprint than yeah than a controlled burn, which prevents a massive wildfire. Yeah, and of course, if there's houses in the way, then you got other things, not just human lives, but the toxins that come off of a house burning down are much worse than just you know having carbon burn from trees that would otherwise be there. Controlled burning is any fire intentionally ignited to meet specific land management objectives, such as to reduce flammable fuels, restore ecosystem health, recycle nutrients, 
or prepare an area for new trees or vegetation. So in the Midwest, we don't really have a lot of forest fires. <laughs> no. um, and I think what we're coming to the conclusion, what we have is a lot of buckthorn and invasive species. And uh, ecosystem preservation is one of the land management goal concepts. We looked up buckthorn and apparently buckthorn and some other invasive species tend to grow a lot in areas that don't have frequent burns. So put controlled free. or uncontrolled. They, they yeah. grow in places that are not very flammable is what I got out of it. Yeah. So putting a little flame down can control that invasive species. Theoretically, I guess. Now, I think the next step is to actually ask somebody like you if you guys know the answers to some of these things. We love to hear about it. There's the controlled burn that we passed yeah. by earlier. Yeah. It's like really far out, but we were just driving on the road to get here and there was the whole town was in smoke and we could smell that it was a controlled burn happening. But yeah, if you have any experience with controlled burns or knowledge as to why, please leave a comment below. Let's start a discussion. Let's talk about it. All right, we are rounding the corner back to uh, the split between Phantom Trail and Honeysuckle Trail or something like that. Something yeah, the like split's that. right here. But this is a pretty fantastic view. Unfortunately, we're not going on that split part. Yeah, well, we're going over here, so let's let's get down there before the people do. We're not going to be done. We will if we take the shortcut. <laughs> So we're going to try and get that for you. Right near the path. Big deer. If you spin around, you can start to see him. I was comparing the landscape here, the rolling hills, or the hilly terrain, to a section of Volo Bog, which is another great hike. You can check out the Volo Bog videos in the Volo Bog playlist. This is just the one. <laughs> He's thinking. <laughs> wow, we don't really get great views of deer like this. His tongue is just going crazy. He's fairly humanized. Yeah. Americans 
is doing it and also uh, lightning being a big part of controlled birds. Yeah. Well, it'll be somewhat uncontrolled. But somewhat uncontrolled, but useful. So prairie management seems to be the primary goal of the birds here. Whereas the ones in the forest are probably buckthorn, the ones in the prairies are probably prairie management. I'm not giving up that buckthorn theory. Buckthorn. I always remembered people getting together and hand picking buckthorn. Yeah, yeah. Out of the ground. Yeah, well that's, and then you burn that. But uh, I got gotcha. you. That's a much more manual, difficult way to do it. Yeah, for sure. Tufts of dirt here. I don't know what that's all about? Ant hills? I'm just kidding. I don't think so. Okay, we're coming up to the end of our hike here, and one of the last stops is the bird blind that looks over this lake. So this is this is what it looks like. Well, you have to spin around to see it. <laughs> it's been around. Definitely. I forgot the name of this lake. I hope there's a sign in here. Well, I see one sign with all the different ducks on it. And geese. Ducks and geese. Crab tree lake. Aha. Let's spin this around to the to the lake side. Pretty choppy out there. just gonna say it's too bad we're not up in uh, Minnesota upper Wisconsin we can see the loons nothing quite like the call of a loon what are you looking at what are you looking at I'm looking at the water you see anything? Water. Trying to find something to zone in on. Hey, I found one. There's one over here. Yeah. Yeah. Can you identify them? Not really. I see the water clear, more clear, more clear than the duck. I think it's just a Canada goose. Not a mallard? Mallard! No. <laughs> These are the ducks. These are the geese. Canadian geese, huh? That's the one that plagues the, the golf course. How's that for uh, being environmental? <laughs> the geese plague my <laughs> golf course. <laughs> All right, so we're finishing our hike at Crabtree Nature Center. Uh, it's a quick little 2.9 mile hike around pretty much the whole perimeter of the park. Uh, this is a great place to, to go with family, to go with if you have kids. It seems like they're really hands-on and getting people involved and understanding nature. Uh, plus there's just like a ton of different terrain types, different plant types, bird types. Goose types, duck types. Uh, there's there's a lot going on here, and it's worth visiting. It's worth exploring. It's worth taking your time. Uh, it is open 
Oh, red tailed hawk. Oh. Did not see that. Oh, there's a giant owls. Oh my. Owl there, owl there. That is a barred owl. Green, great horned owl. Oh, the great horned owl. <laughs> You're awesome. And what is supposed to be in here? Ah, a turkey vulture who needs warmer weather. Well, I feel sorry for you guys to be in here, but I really like to be able to see you up close. So, yeah, thank you for that. This is really cool. Let's see this hawk. This is a huge hawk. Are you normally that big? When I'm seeing you drive along the side of the highway, you're that big. See this guy's talons? Yep. Well, I'm just. Oh, he just yawned. <laughs> wow. Man, these guys are crazy. What did we just? What did you just learn yesterday about uh, elk grove and the fussy woods? Well, they actually have elk there. Kind of like how Buffalo Rock State Park has buffalo, uh, there are elk being taken care of ta taken care of at Bus Woods in Elk Grove. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah, it's great. Well, well that was a fun little addition to the hike outro. Uh, like I said, there's a lot to see here, a lot to explore. So I encourage a visit. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, we are, well. <laughs> Come on, where are we? What are we doing? We are on a random bike trail. And we are here because the second hike that we wanted to do today, uh, turns out it closes at 4 p.m. Or um, they're it... shutting the gates right now and it's not four, so. Cook County employees are leaving 15 minutes early. Oh, <laughs> you narc. <laughs> yeah, well, the only consistent thing about our experience at Crabtree was every single person said it was time to leave. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all, right. all gone. All right. So, yeah, they're, they're, shutting the, they're shutting the gates at Crabtree. We'll have to come back here another time. It's two and a half miles, mile long hike. But uh, we are across the street from the entrance to Crabtree, and it's a biking trail and we really wanted to share with you the second set of sandwiches that we have. So Chad, you're, you're just already going in on it. Uh, so again, we've got- I'm afraid we're gonna get locked in here. Well, let's walk towards it. We'll make this yeah, a shortish video. Make... Uh, so, yeah, they got the police there and everything. Wow, yeah. this is, they are really locking it down. It's time to leave. It's time to leave. And we're in the trailhead across the street, People which has different rules, but people got places to be. Uh, yeah, it's almost four o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what are we eating? We are eating our PB and J's. But these two sandwiches are special. Uh, that is because they are made from dad's homemade bread. Always a delicacy on our hiking adventures. Uh, made with sunflower butter. Also delicious. <laughs> and what is the jelly that we are going to be eating or are eating today? I forgot. Oh, uh, it's pineapple. No, that's just pineapple passion fruit. Pineapple passion fruit. So why don't you hold this so I can join you? Oh, okay, that's a good idea. The police want, we're in here, they're with our car. Sorry, it was smart of us to walk. All right. All right, pineapple, pineapple passion fruit.
Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Very tropical. Yeah, I a good, uh, good expression for it, tropical. Man. In fact, there's bits of pineapple or something in there. I can, I can feel it. It's definitely, um, it's a fun sweet. It's not like, like sugar sweet. It's more like a fruit sweet. Mm. This is a good sandwich. I'm excited to have more of the uh, pineapple passion fruit jelly. Yeah, Comment pretty... below what your favorite jelly is. We can't be the only jelly connoisseurs out there. Oh, look at that. Is that a crane? Or comment, who's your favorite county police department? <laughs> <laughs> who's your favorite county police department? I'll tell you. Marseille. Marseille, uh, the town of Marseille, they're... They're... I have nothing nice to say. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say anything. This is a video about sandwiches. <laughs> oh, you talk to Tom. He's an idiot. <laughs> so I reference uh, Illini State Park videos for that inside joke or outside joke. Um, sandwich is really good. Yeah. I don't have no idea where I want to file this video other than food. Good. That's what it is. All right. All right. We're off to Chain of Lakes tonight to camp. See you.